Hello, this is Carl James Langford. This is part of a series of lectures that I undertook mid part of this year. Uh, this is from the 22nd of August 2016. This looks at the archaeology of the landscape Cranogs. This is an archaeology company lecture taught to three classes uh, over the period of the week starting the 22nd of August. Cranogs themselves are, are wonderful um, enigmas, uh, structures in archaeology. Cranogs themselves have been identified in Scotland, particularly the most remotest islands, particularly lakes and rivers and estuaries. And what they are are basically uh, mounds, artificial mounds that have been built up, um, basically set down into, uh, anchored on the muds. Um, and the rocky beds of lots of lakes and rivers and estuarine waters, mainly in Scotland, some in Ireland, and a couple of examples have been found in Wales. One very recently um, in the Monmouthshire area by the wonderful archaeologist Stephen Clark, but one excavated by uh, Dr. Mark Rednock, National Museum of Wales, uh, was excavated at Langorse Cranog. Um, unlike uh, varying um, other uh, prehistoric structures around the wo uh, world, like uh, pile dwellings or the mat. Um, uh, type floating structures um, in Central America. Um, basically, the, these are these are set in one spot. Um, are basically, form an artificial islands that seemingly today look like naturally formed islands, but they're a little bit out of place. So that's how you can identify them as cranogs. Now, the major introduction to cranogs with myself and all the images in the background today out of Langorse Cranog was in fact Langorse Cranog and Langorse Great Lake uh, near the Brecon Beacons in Wales. But another introduction um, in regards to cranogs themselves um, was to be seen when I visited Orkney for the second time where they were talking about cranogs there. Cranogs themselves are very much developed, some believe, as far back um, in the Bronze Age, uh, about 3,000 years ago. Many Cranogs themselves were built as sort of semi-defensible or isolated structures, um, or they were on marginal um, areas, i.e. you can't uh, live on the land, um, so therefore you build up an artificial island and you live on the lake margins. Um, and these, these, some are still inhabited today, lots of them were still in, uh, inhabited parts of Europe and parts of Scotland up until about the 1700s, 1800s. Um, Cranogs themselves, um, you can say uh, from this des uh, description, the ones on the narrowest of margins where the best of the land has been used, as I've already said, um, uh, Cranogs have been variously interpreted as freestanding wooden structures anchored to the lake bed. Um, although uh, most ca commonly uh, the, the, an island is based uh, from which the wooden structure um, is constructed above, uh, constructed of varying layers of brush, stone, uh, soils, timbers and so on. Um, we can't say that we know of great numbers of, of cranogs existing um, in Ireland, Scotland and some in Wales. We, we don't know the precise numbers, but they're usually between 10 and 30 uh, metres in diameter. Talking about the um, interpretation of the word cranog, what does cranog mean? Uh, cranog from the Scottish Gaelic and maybe the Irish uh, Gaelic itself uh, typically means um, artificial island. Uh, the, the word cranog, C-R-A-N-N-O-G, um, has just been abrupted in varying different forms. Um, cranog in the very old Irish basically um, stems and refers to a wooden structure um, from the word stemming from the word cran, uh, which means um, tree, uh, literally young tree that it seems to be set somewhere. Uh, and obviously, set in a wooden structure in the middle of a lake seems to be where the word cranock comes from. Um, and it seems that the modern use of the word cranock seems to, and, and references to the word cranock uh, it, across the, the Gallic world and the, the Welsh world, world itself, seems to come. Um, from about the 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 the, 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 the age of about 1100s, uh, there have been other interpretations of the word cranock, even even the idea of a crow's nest or a pulpit or something along that. Um, thus, there is no real um, consensus, really strictly, on the word cranock. It seems, seems to broadly change, but broadly it seems to refer to some kind of artificial island. Roughly, maybe um, looking at Ireland, we've got the widest widespread 
um, Cranogs uh, existed. And, and I'm just using um, in backdrop for this video today the, the Langos Cranog examples. But if you go on the internet, I'm sure that uh, 1,200 um, identified Cranogs in Ireland, I'm sure you'll be all able to find some stuff. And somewhere in the region of about 350 plus have been found in Scotland. Uh, lots of them in Hebridean Ireland. Some say the figure is more like 500. Previously unknown Cranogs in Scotland and Ireland are still being found um, as underwater surveys find them. Lots being inundated by water. Lots of the Cranogs themselves are just breaking the water really uh, with um, a wooden structure above. Um, when, when we really associate the word Cranog, if anyone who's, uh, knows Ireland at all, you've got to look for the area of the county of Wexford. Uh, some say really that if you're looking at early examples of Cranogs, they don't just come from the Bronze Age. Some reckon that some of the most early uh, Cranog examples come from way back, um, around um, uh, 3,500 years BC, so that's 5,500 years ago, um, examples from Ireland actually. The construction techniques, as we've already intimated themselves, are varying in the witnessed in the archaeological record. Manifestations of these small um, inlets, um, cranogs typically are something that anchored to the bed, the bed of the lake, the bed of the waterway. Um, when when timbers themselves, occasionally if you if you get a mud, muddy base instead of a stone base itself, timbers are driven really deep. Um, Axe sharpened, um, sharpened uh, uh, piles actually driven into the muds, um, and that would give some sort of anchoring for this new artificial island. The piles could also be joined together with mortise and tenon joints, uh, or, or basically uh, varying other carpentry skills to actually offer these anchorages. So you can imagine creating a skirt of these posts. Anchored down into um, the bed, the, the watery bed, and in there you just put all your refuse, your your rubble, uh, your your wood, um, broken bits of pottery. You chuck it all in there to build up a level. Basically, um, hard um, coring, as we you would see when you'd build a garage today on land, you'd hard core it, and directly above that. Uh, what you might find is you've got a platform, a wooden platform on top, and the building is then erected above this. Um, you do find the, the remains of cattle bone and deer and swine excavated in these cranog sites, various wooden utensils and everyday uh, daily products. Um, I, I, f I feel um, the, the idea of the cranog itself um, is something very much, um, when it's connected with water, is something very much uh, enigmatic. Uh, we don't we don't rightly completely understand them. Um, we don't really th yeah. There's ideas about them being used for defence. Um, there's ideas of them being used on the margins of civilization where people can't uh, seemingly um, occupy um, attractive land. There may be other reasons as well. People wishing to have natural um, isolation. Um, and just a little bit of detail about the um, Langos um, Lake um, example of a Cranog. Um, excavations of the one at Langos Lake uh, by Dr. Mark Redknapp um, on this artificial island when when it was originally excavated or, 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 or deemed to be there um, um, and people were really sure it was there by the late uh, 1980s. Well, 1989 and 1993, the National Museum of Wales at Cardiff University headed by Dr. Mark Redknapp uh, near Brecon at Langhorse Lake itself. Um, he, he used to, people used to believe that there was something there because it was linked um, to early um, early medieval uh, royal site, the, the, the kingdom of Brycaniog. The small early um, kingdom of Brycaniog corresponds uh, approximately to the historical county of Bre Breconshire, Brecknockshire in South Wales. The territory took its name from Brechen, a dynastic founder of the royal line according to later legend, associated with this spot, the Cranog itself. Archaeologists excavated the site and they believe that maybe there was some um, Irish shenanigans at work, some Irish influence. 
Um, the Cranog was carefully um, looking at the archaeology constructed of brushwood and sandstone boulders, reinforced and surrounded by several lines of oak, plank, palisade to sort of, uh, as a skirt, the circumference. Um, of this site. Tree ring dated of the well preserved timbers has established that they were felled between AD 889 and AD 893. So that's when this Cranog um, was really deemingly to be dated from, but maybe there's some archaeological evidence from previous to that. But the interesting thing, the Irish influence is, is the site seems to have been influenced by Irish building techniques and was um, possibly constructed with the assistance of maybe an Irish craftsman, um, which, which is which is absolutely fascinating that uh, you've got uh, by kind of Brecon in the heart of Wales, you've got some kind of um, Irish influence, but not to get too um, too affected by what the historians say and uh, all the rest of it. But it's said, however, that the kings of Brycania claim to be set, descended from an Irish um, dynastic line um, settling at Langorse, making their sort of um, Cleese or palace site at Langorse um, Lake and uh, the Cranog itself. And their use as um, the, the reconstruction itself um, probably um, enhanced um, the political standing of the Brycardia family. The, 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 the Cranog to build a Cranog there with beautifully wooden type structure in the middle of a lake would have sort of uh, been in, in awe of the local surrounding. Uh, peoples. As a royal site, Langorse Cranog uh, would have been a centre of administration as well as a place for hospitality. Uh, when the ru ruler seasonally held court, uh, received tribute, indulged in hunting or fishing. The artefacts uncovered, which include embroidered textiles and parts of a portable shrine, confirm the site's aristocratic status. Now, um, talking about the Cranog and uh, uh, moving away from Cranogs and finishing today, there's something known as the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that records in AD 916, Ethel Hlyd, uh, Lady of the Mercians, sent an army into Wales three days after the murder of Abbot um, Echelbrecht and his companions. Um, and the army destroyed Abraik um, Mier, the Anglo-Saxon name for Langorse Lake and captured the king's wife and 33 other persons. Some believe that this refers to an attack on the Cranog at um, Llangos Lake um, and the capture of the wife of King Tudor ap Elisev. Um, during excavations, a charred burnt layer was uncovered, probably representing this attack and a destruction layer at the site. So amazingly that we got a wonderful piece of archaeology said uh, that the crown Og itself was was basically destroyed around uh, AD 916. So this is my crown Og lecture today. Sorry, it's extremely late. Um, hopefully you've gained something from this um, and keep watching my videos and please subscribe. Thank you very, very much.